Folks, this video is going to serve two purposes. The first is it's going to be my PID tuning video for the FlyPro X Jaguar. But the second purpose is that it's going to be the flight review for this copter. I'm going to have some tuning, and then at the end, I've got some acro flight to show off how it flies. And I will spoil the ending slightly by telling you the copter flies really, really well. I'm actually really impressed. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because of the sort of silly nature of the Jaguar, you know, that I thought it was more sort of marketed towards the cool factor and was going to let me down in the flight performance. But this may have the widest tuning envelope of any copter I've flown. Now, see, that's a very careful compliment there. I'm not necessarily going to say this is the fastest copter. I couldn't even begin to judge that. But as far as tuning goes, it flew really well on a very wide set of, of PIDs and gave me a lot of latitude to feel for how I wanted it to fly. And I, I, I would say perhaps if you were a beginning tuner, this might be a great copter for you to, to get into. I'll say more about that in my upcoming video where I'll do a rundown of all of the copters I've looked at recently and tell you who I think is the best purchaser for each of them. Uh, in the meantime, here's the PID tuning. Enjoy. We're gonna do some practical PID tuning here on the, um, the Flight Pro Jaguar. This is default PIDs. I have cheated a little bit though. I have, I have flown it a little bit, so I'm not completely going in blind. And I know that the default pits are actually pretty good. In this turn here, notice the complete lack of prop wash oscillation. Uh, the copter is completely smooth and in control through the whole turn. This isn't one example of the kind of thing I'm talking about when I say this copter has a very wide tuning envelope. This is default PIDs, but it stays this good on many other sets of PIDs as well. If you listen really carefully as I come over these trees, you can just hear the slightest oscillation, but really not very much. And this is a, definitely a maneuver where another copter would be having a ton of oscillation. They're not perfect. It feels a little drifty, but they're pretty good. Here's another maneuver where prop wash would have come out on many copters, but you could barely even hear any oscillation at all on this one. I think you'll agree. I could not see where I was going there. I think you'll agree that's pretty good. Uh, you can't feel how it feels, of course, but not bad. So it feels a little bit, mm, feels a little bit sort of f floaty and imprecise. Uh, so I'm gonna raise the P gains. I almost always raise P gains on most copters. And let's take yaw P up to like 100. Yaw P to 100. Let's take pitch to like seven. I know, I'm changing a lot of things at once. Uh, my feeling is that the whole thing is a little loose, so I'm just going to raise all the axes, axes. Let's raise roll to like 55. There we go, 55. And right, we're going to leave everything else alone. As if that's not enough, right? <laughs> uh, normally I would suggest changing one thing at a time, but I have, I have a feeling... It just feels like the copter is a little loose on all the axes. I had no signs of prop wash. The D gains are very low. So I feel like we have room to raise the P gains here. Throughout this flight, pay attention to how smooth the motor sounded in the last flight versus how slightly more oscillation there is, especially in sharp turns in this flight. This is the effect of the increased P gain. We should start to see more prop wash come out. There. Prop wash oscillation. The copter is flying sharper. Still really smooth. Very little prop wash oscillation, honestly. Feels sharper for sure. I can't see anything going into the sun here. A little prop wash oscillation there, really good so far. 
If I give some throttle punches, the nose stays pretty solid. Uh, so the eye gains are about right. You don't see the nose pitch up or down. Or yaw left or right on those throttle punches. Pretty solid. Let me give a really violent one. Well, well so I got some out of it. But overall, really very good. The eye gains are about right. And no bounce there. On This is overall a really well handling copter. My philosophy is, if you did something and it seemed good, do it a little more <laughs> and see if it gets better. Um, I don't feel the need to adjust the eye gains at all. The eye gains uh, the copter feels really solid. Uh, I think as we raise the P gains, we'll get even more sort of locked in and consistent. Let's take this to 115. Again, I like to, raising the yaw P gain helps uh, sharpen up the copter's turning, makes it feel very precise in turns. Um, it makes it feel like it's going where you're pointing it, is a good way to put it. Let's take pitch up to 80. And these are relatively high gains. Let's take a roll up to, say, 65, maybe 70. I mean, this is a symmetrical copter. Our, our pitch and roll P gains should be pretty similar. Let's, let's make them the same. Six, this is a symmetrical copter. Shouldn't they be the same? Maybe they should. As you raise the P gain, uh, the P term will leave less error for the I term to correct. So if you the I if the I gain feels just a little low, then the cop you can fix that just by raising the P gains. In fact, that's a better way to fix it. The I gain feeling low. Uh, things to look for are the nose changing attitude when you change the throttle is a good a good indicator that the I gain is a little too low. Uh, or if you're doing a sort of a smooth sweeping motion where the stick position is remaining the same, but you notice that the copter's uh, attitude is not staying the same during that motion. That could indicate low eye gain. I think the throttle dependent changes are the biggest indicator for me. So we're just going to look for signs that the P terms are starting to give us trouble and feel for. There is the oscillation is a little more pronounced there than it was. And I'm seeing more video noise. If you take a look at my DVR feed here, those white lines that you're seeing across the screen are the result of electrical noise coming from the motors as the result of increased oscillation. Uh, so it's usually the effect of excess D gain because D gain makes a lot of high frequency electrical noise. But here I've left the D gains alone and I've only raised the P gains and in sharp turns I'm seeing these white lines come out and that's indication of, of more oscillation. If you're playing with your D terms and you start seeing a ton of those white lines in your video feed, that's a sign, in my opinion, that your D gains may be getting to be to the point where they could be damaging your motors. Ultimately, the motor temperatures are the, the final indicator of whether D gain is too high, though. The copter definitely feels like it's flying better. Oh, yeah. spot. How's our nose? Nothing untoward happened at the end of those flips. No bounce or anything. It's going really good. Whatever's happening here with the ESCs and the, the motors, it's all working really well. I had a moment there where I realized I was about to back into my own head. I heard the copter getting close to me. I realized I was about to fly into my own head. So let's not do that. Um, we're getting a little more oscillation, but even still, as high as we've raised these P these gains, we're not getting a ton of oscillation. Let's see if we can raise the D term now, because um, these D gains are super low. Uh, it is like 30... 5 degrees right now, maybe 40 degrees at most. So if I did put these D terms where they are, you know, somewhere... Oh, not yaw. I don't need to change yaw. Oops. Put that back where it was. What was that, like 20? 
If I did change these D-gains, I would want to recheck the motors when it got warmer to see if um, if the motors were getting hot. They're not going to... I'm going to have a little more latitude to raise the D-gains here in the winter when it's really cold out. Part of the challenge with tuning Betaflight is that there's such a wide tuning envelope, um, especially with a good setup like this. I'm really impressed with this setup, the tunability of this setup. I'm making these changes, and the copter's just flying a little better, a little differently, but nothing bad is happening. It's really impressive. Um, part of the problems, one of the problems with Betaflight is that it's hard to know whether you're tuning right. You just um, you just kind of put the pids where you feel like they need to be, but nothing it used to be that something bad would happen and would tell you you were you were screwing up. But now it's like, well, just where do you want it? It's it's the the freedom, but also the frustration of not. When do you stop? <laughs> Where do you want it? I don't know. I never thought about that. I was always so busy thinking about what I could get away with. It never occurred to me to ask what I actually wanted. So there you go. Here we go. D gains have been raised now. Smooth there, no prop wash oscillation there. A little bounce there that we didn't have before, I think. Maybe not. Hard to tell if that was my fingers. The copter as a whole feels a little m more sort of nervous and less settled. The motors sound less smooth. This 2.1 millimeter or 2.8 millimeter lens can go die. <laughs> I can't really do those tight maneuvers very easily because I can't see the where the obstacles are. Ah, that was a landing. I did that on purpose. So I've just backed uh, the P gains and the D gains down just a smidge on pitch and roll. The motors just sound a little less smooth than they did before, uh, and I didn't, I don't know, I mean, we might be able to make it fly sharper, but it's already flying really good. I don't feel the need to push it to the absolute edge in order to find, to find some hypothetical better place. Uh, if, if I, if it was a racing copter, I really would do best to get uh, some air gates set up and fly it, because it's hard to judge the tune for racing when you're doing sort of, you know, I'm not trying to hit tiny gaps and, and line up very, very precise lines like you would when you were racing. But I don't have that set up today. I'm not going to, so we'll call this pretty good. And let's see how she flies. A little sun is not in the best location, so what are you gonna do though? Oh, <laughs> the video is not the best either. This 2.8 millimeter lens can go die in a fire. I cannot see where I freaking am.
Well, I've had several near misses now <laughs> where I've almost crashed into a tree or something. So let's call that good. <laughs> and then it's going to be the end of it. <laughs> Don't put your luck. Between the, the sun being low in the sky and this 2.8 millimeter lens not letting me see what I'm freaking doing. I really legitimately, some of those things that looked like I skimmed the trees. <laughs> it was complete, complete luck and, and intuition. Uh, I really couldn't see where I was though. <laughs> All right, happy flying.